Welcome back to the Name Redacted Podcast, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast in the world. We are two weeks away, right? Two weeks away, Jake, from opening day? Yep, two weeks. Two weeks away from opening day. The positivity horn is ready to go when Corey Kluber toes the slab as your Red Sox opening day starter. People wanted it to be Chris Sale because it's his birthday. You know what we say to birthdays on this podcast, Pete? Fuck, Fuck your birthday. Fuck your birthday. Cor- Hit me again. Corey Kluber is your opening day starter. It took not one, not two, but three seconds into the podcast for Tyler's internet to cut out. He's gone. Corey Kluber is your opening day starter. Chris Sale. Gets the ball in game two. It's what people want to talk about right now. It's what people are discussing. Corey Kluber on opening day. If this were 2017, oh, if this were 2017, oh, Corey Kluber. People want to people want to throw some darts at the Boston Red Sox, Pete. First of all, how you doing? It's been a long time. It has been a long time. It's been like a month. Uh, I missed you guys. Well, how's how's ho- uh, how's hockey? Hockey's great. Bruins okay. not right. not doing so great as of late. Why? I thought they were winning every game. Uh, no, they've lost three out of their last four. Ooh. Falling apart a little bit, but it's Tough all right. Stretch. Nice little adversity check. Uh, adversity test. Nice little mm-hmm. heat check before the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Get it out of their system. Stanley Who Cup they back lost on. to? Uh, they lost to the Red Wings. They lost to the Capitals. They lost to the Blackhawks, who were one of the worst teams in the league last Ooh. night. So uh, it's it's been a tough stretch. Okay. You said they still on pace to break the record for points or wins. I don't know if they're technically still on pace now, uh, but they uh, they're going to do it. OK, how many games are left in the season? Fifteen around that area. OK. All right. Go Bruins. That's right. Why am I hearing an echo? Oh, there we go. Got to be Tyler's fault. This is just a, a disaster to start the show. Tyler, you can so you can't see this if you're watching this on YouTube, but like we can see Tyler attempting over and over and over to come into uh, the recording studio here, and it's just buffering and buffering and buffering and buffering, and he's not having any luck getting into uh, into the studio. But that's okay. That's okay because it's two weeks until opening day. Did you see uh, that we had John Anik and Jason Anik on the show last week, Pete? I did, but I don't know who those people are. You're not a UFC guy. That's, I thought they may have been, but no, I'm not a UFC guy. I, those the names did sound familiar, but I didn't know who they were. Yeah, John Anik is like the the play by play like voice of the UFC. Oh, so that guy rocks. Big yeah, he's guy. awesome. Yeah, yeah, but he's a Boston guy. Didn't know that. So he, I mean, we we just we had him on for an hour with his brother, and he he just like fucking loves Nomar. So we just gushed about Nomar for like sixty minutes. Well, now I'm disappointed that I missed that because yeah. I also love Nomar. Yeah. Who doesn't love Nomar? It's a tough guy to not like. Yeah. Jake, do you have any memories of Nomar or no? I just remember everyone loved him. Yeah. Everyone did love him. Everyone did love him. Everybody mimicking that batting stance was like a rite of passage as a young Bostonian. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't do that. You, you definitely did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you've never like done the, the Nomar like Touching the glove thing over and over and over again. Have you seen my swing, Pete? No, I'm not saying like I'm not saying like you do it in game or whatever, but like just Pete, as Pete. What have you seen my swing? Yeah, it sucks. Whoa! Mm-hmm. Shut up, Tyler. Manny Ramirez. Sure. It's Shut Manny up, Tyler. Ramirez. You've been gone for Thank the last you. five minutes. Thank I'm you. Sorry, I had some technical difficulties, Pete. You haven't even been here. You don't even know what yeah. I've been going through the you last month. With my go new setup. here, dude. I have to listen to fucking Jake and Jared shit on me every <laughs> fucking 10 minutes about my setup. Listen, you were telling us before the show, you have your new desk being built. Yeah. I built my desk. Okay. I built this thing myself. It doesn't work, my new setup, but I built it. So <laughs> we're trying to get by. I'm doing my fucking best right now. I think losing Pat was like the worst thing that ever happened to Tyler because. All of our no. frustrations were just directed at Pat. <laughs> just shit on Pat every week. But no, fuck Pat, because he ruined Mr. Milliken. So he can also fuck off. The one time, the one time I ever tried to educate the people, he had to leave and he never came back. Never. 
Now that I just is, have to see him you taunt know what, me. You know what pisses me off about Pat is he's trying to tiptoe his way back into baseball content. Have you seen this? It's weird. Jake, have you seen this? He like just kind of had started posting like the Mike, Tri- Mike Trout strikeout again. Like he just like mentions baseball every now and then. It's weird. It now, makes me uncomfortable. I've seen, seen a lot of Mike Trout content coming from coming from that TikTok. It's like he's talking to a new audience. Has has the audience changed that much? Has Business Pat brought in a whole new group of people and he you know feels what like it is? he needs to tell them? I'll tell you what it is. He's tell losing, us. he's bleeding followers <laughs> because of all his stupid ass business tweets. So he's like, wait a second, wait, 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 Mike Trout. I struggle with Mike Trout. Remember, remember that? And people are like, no, dude, you chose, you chose business over us. You chose business. Imagine building an entire audience of baseball fans and then being like, all right, now I'm business, Pat. And then when people are like, well, I signed up for baseball stuff. And then you tweet out, you just do it and, and all that. And then people are like, well, this isn't what I signed up for. So they started, they started leaving. And uh, I think he, he got, he's doing it wrong because I, I told him this. Stop giving actual business advice. Yeah, no like one gives a fuck. It's got to be lean a joke. into the the gimmick of business Pat and his business model being just getting drunk all the time, which is what he's doing. Just do that, but then he's actually doing business, and then and and now he's pivoting back towards baseball after he told us that baseball Pat was dead. You had a whole funeral for baseball Pat. Now we're, we're like, what, like a month and a half removed from when you killed baseball Pat and you're already bringing him back and pivoting away from from business, Pat? Yeah, at least give you us just, some some time to miss him. Give, a, give us some consistency. Yet. I, I, I want to see business Pat just be somebody who who like mocks grind set culture and just how stupid that area of the Internet is. Like, I would love that for Pat and his brand. But unfortunately, it seems like business Pat has been like influenced by grind set culture. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. That's definitely what it is. Like Pat Pat is I'll say this. Pat is a successful businessman. That's true. He owns bars. They do well. He's he's not he's not talking about a life that he's not living, because he is. But no one fucking cares. <laughs> we need we need the character business Pat. Yeah, who's flying to Miami conference. for business, but is just like sucking tequila out of like a, a a goose made of ice. That's what we need. That's business, Pat, to us, the audience. And you're losing the audience when you're just going and out and, and tweeting all these like random business and motivational quotes. It's, it's just it's just not it's not what we want. It's not what you need. Should I call him? I, I think you should. I'm going to call him. I don't know I'm if he'll answer. He might. I, I, I just, I want to ask him. Ask I want to ask stuff. him what the deal is with, with what's going on. He said he lost 21 pounds. He seems unwell. Yeah, he's been working out every day. Not good to lose weight like that. Well, he looks good. He's, he's, he's in shape. It's just a matter of. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you know I answer the fucking phone, and <laughs> I hear you talking. I'm like, this motherfucker is definitely on the show right now. <laughs> what the fuck are you calling me for? Um, so I, I got a, I got a few questions. First of all, how are you doing? I'm doing terrific. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm doing awesome. Uh, That's great. So you've, uh, how many days in a row have you worked out now? Uh, I think just north of 80 because I just posted about it like maybe yesterday or two days ago and it was 80. So you're working... 83 consecutive. You're not taking rest days at all. So here's the fun fact and here's what's good, a good thing about being living uh, with my, my ex Laker strength with brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are ways to work out that uh, keep you in somewhat of a recovery mode. So as long as you're, you're not like, for example... This is big when I was playing because I was a big drinker. A um, uh, way to speed up recovery is to walk uh, like, uh, like a 15 incline and you got to keep your heart rate between 130 and 150. 
and it's supposed to expedite your recovery. So it's still a workout. And yes, it's, it's actually quite difficult, but it's like stuff like that that allow you to recover quicker while still working out instead of just sitting there and resting. Got it. Okay. Well, congratulations. Yeah. So you're down how many pounds? 20? Yeah, 20, 21 ish, depending on the day. Okay. Uh, wh- what's your weight right now? Uh, I didn't weigh myself today, but I would say 230, 229. And what was your playing weight? Well, very dependent on what part of my career you're asking, but the highest I ever was was uh, the big leagues with the twins, and that was like 252. 252? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Red Sox, when I first signed, they said they wanted me to be 245 to 255 when I was in the big league. That feels kind of fluffy for you. I felt really... That was like the thing, though. They, they, they always compared everyone to John Lester, who was a fucking brick house. <laughs> and that's where they were like, yeah, we're going to get you there when you, when you get to the big league. And I was like, well, okay. I mean, best of luck to you, but I don't know how I'm going to do. Imagine just going out there being like, here he comes. Here comes Tubby Pat. <laughs> <laughs> fat, fat Pat was right there. I was fat. I was not in good shape when I was in the 250s. It was very much so the big league spread in Minnesota. No offense to the Boston Red Sox nation here. Yeah, but when I was, they don't have what at least not when I was playing. What Minnesota had? Like Minnesota had like three chefs that could get anything you wanted. There was always fresh baked cookies. Like it was the best. So like I was I was a fat ass in Minnesota. Might be one of the reasons why my D-Lo dropped ten miles an hour. We don't even have real um, ketchup but... here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What, what is the name of ketchup they use there now? Isn't there like some some veggie ketchup or something like that? Yeah, it's, called, it's called like... veggie ketchup. <laughs> Isn't there some <laughs> veggie ketchup? <laughs> oh man, how you doing? <laughs> Wait, not we're not well. done. We're not done asking you the questions. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so I feel like you're kind of at a crossroads right now where you wanted to have this funeral for baseball Pat, but you've been posting some baseball content recently, which is... Not only have I been posting baseball content, I've kicked it up a notch. <laughs> I've posted more baseball content in the last seven days than I probably ever have in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that? It's uh, what I'm calling it is the genesis of uh, business pot. You know, listen, it's a part of the story. You can't just you can't just exit out of your life. It's a part. We tell of the, the part story. that just happened. This is what we fucking yes, told right. you when you tried to say that you were just business pat. Now I said you can't just close that. Like, you fucking played professional baseball. You were on a baseball podcast, the biggest, thought, most downloaded, first. most listened to baseball podcast of that fucking franchise, and you're just like I'm. I only do business now. I tried to tell you that, and now you're you're repeating back to me what I told you when you tried to leave baseball, Pat, in the past. First off, Jared. Patrick. I am no longer co-host on this podcast. I'm a guest now, so I prefer to be treated as such and not spoken to in such a manner. Okay. Uh, that's first off. Okay. Plus, we are having a business discussion right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is not how you discuss business. It's, okay. not, it's not proper the way you're discussing this. With me. Okay. So that's a lesson learned. I'm not a business guy. Yeah, listen, that, that's very clear as I sit here and talk to you. Mm-hmm. I have a business degree, mm-hmm. though. Do you? From yes. night school. From night school. I, it counts. Yeah. It's a bit, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. My, re- my regular degree here. from the same school barely counts. I don't know if your night, night school degree counts. No, it counts. Pat, it sure. does seem like there's a little bit of course correction here where you really wanted to murder baseball, Pat, but you, what uh, what is dead is never dead or whatever that Listen, they say there's always you know there's a lot of different versions of me Pete uh, you know he saw Miami pass for a week he is a special person but he needed to die in Miami for at least until I go back because that guy is out of his mind there's a lot of different versions of me you never know what one's going to pop up it's just you know if I keep everyone on their toes is baseball pack dead is he not is is business Pat dead? Is not business Pat's definitely not dead. He's doing so. You know, he's doing some horrendous things here in Hoboken. But you know, listen, it, it, we're not really sure where I'm going with this, but we're gonna have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who 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 are we talking to right now? Are you talking to business Pat right now? This is just this is business Pat. You're actually in between calls I have right now, which is uh, surprise. I just hung up and you popped up on my phone. Uh, so I have a ton of meetings going on, guys. 
I don't know that I can really make time for this as well. Um, what? When's your next business meeting? What time? Uh, Five forty-five is supposed to be the call. Okay, so we have ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Um, how do you feel like your life has changed? Tyler has a question after this. Same. How do you feel like your life has changed uh, since becoming business Pat full time? Do you think that um, the focus? that you've been able to have on your businesses has made you a better business person or kind of like, like what's the thought process there? Um, I, I don't know that I've gotten better at business. <laughs> just <laughs> focusing on business. Um, Appreciate your honesty. The real, yeah. The, the real thought process here as to why, um, you know, we moved on from some of the baseball stuff uh, was because like all of my, especially for you guys, like all of my stuff that I do pretty much happens after five o'clock and that's when we always recorded. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I never could kind of get a rest. I was turning you down constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just was like, you know what, listen, this is, you know, business patent is the priority right now. Let's, let's, let's have an open forum discussion, which listen, Red Sox Nation has been very open with me about the content they prefer for me. Um, <laughs> so there is no shortage of, of opinions in the comments, which I'm very appreciative of. I have, want to have an open forum. And we, we certainly, we've certainly had an open forum. Okay. Tyler? Uh, Pat, so I don't know. Obviously, you haven't had the time to listen with your new uh, busy schedule, but I've been going through a lot lately. And I, I think a lot of people uh-huh. kind of recognize like I'm going through a lot. Um, I really feel like the start of it the genesis, some would say, uh, began with your final appearance on this podcast. And you kind of left in the middle of my first segment, you know, Mr. Milliken. It was a big opportunity. And when you left in the middle of it, it never came back. We kind of walked away from it. We realized it was dead. Does it keep you up at night that you have really hurt me in that way or possibly limited some of my career opportunities? Ah. Uh. Oof, that's an interesting question. Tyler, first off, great to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, really good to really good to hear from you. Um, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, no, none of that has occurred in my life. Uh, when I, I when that segment was starting, I was like, this is a great time because this is gonna be terrible. Uh, <laughs> wow. <so. laughs> Fuck you, Pat. Fuck you. So when I went to dinner that night and I started getting uh or actually it wasn't that night, it was a few nights later when you guys released the podcast and I started getting people a tweet at me and stuff like that about how <laughs> Pat clearly didn't want to listen to Tyler. It was it was a really funny moment for me. I laughed about it. I, I did not in any way feel bad to you. Um and uh I I you know, listen, <laughs> take some breaks. I don't want to hear it really about people being tough on you and your limited career opportunities. <laughs> if you just go into my comment section, uh, anytime I post anything, it is people absolutely shitting all over me, including hosts of this podcast. Like, so, you uh, deserve it. Who? I don't deserve anything, Tyler. You deserve it um, all, Pat. <laughs> I, 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 don't, just, I don't shit on you, Pat. Huh? <laughs> you, think, you think I shit on you? I didn't say that. I'm just, I am just reporting the news. Is it well, who else are you speaking about? a real about? process of elimination that can be made. Yeah, yeah, Pete B would never do something like that. No, all I, all no, I saw. Pete B would never. No, no. P- Pat posted a motivational comment or a quote from his from his dad last week, and I, all I said was, "The business doesn't fall far from the tree." I don't think I posted a motivational quote from my father. You said like my uh, dad always told me this thing. And you're yeah, like, I apply that to my to my laws of business. <laughs> that wasn't motivational. It's- it was not a motivational quote, nor do I have the laws of business by Pat Light. <laughs> like have you, you should, considered you writing a book on business? Uh, I already have three books in the work. Uh, you know, worldwide publishing. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of. Uh, you know, one of them is called uh, "Why Why I Left Pat Kicks Behind." Mm. Okay, that is that yeah. just. Uh, is that something that we can expect to to read soon, or is that just like a it's a big project? Yeah, I mean it's a big project, but I'm pretty. I mean I'm pretty uh, organized, so I would say you know I'd say an early fall uh, arrival in, in the U.S. Oh, well, in the U.S. Yeah, just, just is it in releasing in the Christmas. U.S. first? No, no, no. We, I'm, I'm, you wouldn't believe how big I am in Malaysia. Malaysia, uh, Malaysia. I'm huge oh, in Malaysia. Aquarium. Yeah, yeah. So uh, releasing there first. Uh, I actually got a trip out there soon because I got to see some people. 
Uh, you, but, get a, you get uh, a fucking sixty percent chance of landing safely. Sixty yeah. percent. Yeah, a, that's, that's fine a, though. It's a touchy I like to topic. Live, you know, a little crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, given given the airline, maybe yeah. fucking less than sixty. The two the two biggest mysteries in Malaysia are what happened to the plane and uh, how is Pat so good at business? <laughs> yeah, man. Pat Pat's got a huge audience in in Malaysia. Um, Patrick. Uh, how, mm-hmm. do you, can you give us your, I know that you don't want to get into like too much of specifics. Um, can you give us your, your meeting schedule in terms of like the cities that you're going to be traveling to in the near future? Uh, whew. I know I'll be in Miami again, probably in a month. What kind of, bu- uh, what kind of business is, is going on in Miami? Listen, there's some things going on down there. Miami is <laughs> yeah. a fun place. And I like to visit it. So we're like, I'm open up a few spots on there. Okay. I'd like to jump in here and say um, that me and Patrick have a business meeting, uh, a tentative business meeting planned for next weekend. What the fuck is that? What? Uh, your boy's traveling to oh, New yeah. Jersey. And uh, me and Pat may may discuss some business. Pete, Pete B is going to New Jersey? Correct. Going to Hoboken. For what? The Devil's Game. Did you ask me if I wanted to go? Me? No. Yeah. Didn't think. Who about are you it. going with? <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a little group of uh, one of my one of my devil's friends. It's a whole fucking group, and I There's can't get an us. invite. Yeah. Tough right. look. That is tough. That is a tough business you. meeting. <clears throat> you're, famously, yeah. you're famously not a businessman. <laughs> I'm a business degree holder. You're not a you business literally degree. Literally said user. earlier on this podcast, you're bad at business. Yeah, but Dan Shaughnessy did say in his column that I'm running a business empire. I saw not wrong. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not wrong. So Dude, who's the guy that ran out of the bathroom? Uh, no. Pete Abraham. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, absolute clown shoe. Um, listen, I know you got business to attend to. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege that you spent this much time uh, on the podcast. I know that um, you know you probably charged tens of thousands for appearances like this and i i can guarantee you that they they run a lot shorter than the time that you gave us here today so you you cannot even put into words how appreciative and and grateful we are for for you giving us this time today listen i'm I'm happy to do so uh draft kings will certainly be getting an invoice (laughs) Um, oh so you are charging us time is money money is business specifically yeah listen it's not you know nothing's free in life jared that's true um but uh and that's listen Lesson one in business. Boom. Just gave everyone a, a business lesson on your podcast. Free of charge. Free of charge. Um, actually, not free of charge. But anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> Charging all of us. It was, yeah, it was, it was great being on the podcast. But I will add, uh, Miami is not the only one. Boston's uh, in the works in April. So uh, we'll have some fun when I get up there. When in, when in April will you be here? I haven't seen the schedule yet, but I may or may not have connected with uh, some Red Sox people that I used to be... Uh, used to theoretically work for um, that I might be coming up to have, you know, some conversations with. Is that, that, that's a tease. It is a tease. Mm. Okay. I look forward to hearing all about it. Yeah, you did. Actually, I was meeting meeting to call you uh, this week anyway, to offline to discuss it. Yeah, let's let's Uh, discuss it offline. Yeah, let's have a conversation. Yeah, let's have a conversation. Listen, let's have a conversation. Your assistant call mine and we'll just, we'll we'll set schedule. Okay. Jake, book Pat Light. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it all right well, this is great guys hey this is excellent thank you for uh thank you for the time we really appreciate it it's my pleasure okay patrick james light everybody thank you bye pat yeah bye bye pat see ya pat light pat light everybody uh um, <laughs> guy outstanding individual absolutely mm-hmm. outstanding who by the way loves blue moon he loves a good blue moon. Um, but I don't know if you've noticed this, Pete. I stopped doing the blue moon ad reads. Uh, yeah, I saw that uh, Jake was taking over blue, uh, blue moon ad reads and other mm-hmm. ad reads, maybe. Uh, but I saw that the people Just fucking love them. People love them. People are calling it the best thing to ever happen on the podcast. And it'd be hard to disagree with that notion. Um, so, but... But he does them in, in post production so that uh, Tyler can't hear all the horrible things that Jake says about him during the ad reads. It's okay. It's, 
Uh, thank it you to the okay. people who reached out to check on my mental health after the last few. Uh, it was very much appreciated and I'm doing okay. Um, can't tell you how I'll feel in the future or even tomorrow, but I'll stay strong. And suck on it. All right, let's go with the Blue Moon ad read. Thanks, Jared. Spring training is here, which means baseball is finally back. Blue Moon gives you a dose of ballpark nostalgia to get you excited for the baseball season. In fact, Blue Moon was born in a ballpark at the Sandlot Brewery in Denver, Colorado. Its bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantee a -a one-of-a-kind beer experience perfect for spring weather. One of my favorite times to crack a Blue Moon is when it's getting to the end of the podcast, and I know Tyler's about to be like, Oh, Jake, oops, looks like I didn't record the last hour and a half of my audio. It literally happens every time, Tyler. Don't act like you're surprised. You're legitimately 0 for your last 20. You're batting 0%. From its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander, Blue Moon Belgian-style wheat ale is a -a one-of-a-kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full-flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Why strike out with the same old beer when you could get something one-of-a-kind? Best served with a signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color, a beer this good only comes around once in a Blue Moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you for spring training. Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale is a one of a kind every time. Get Blue Moon delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared to see your delivery options. That's get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared. Blue Moon, made brighter. Celebrate responsibly Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden Colorado Ale. Thank you, Jake. Uh, great job no, as always. You. People love it. Uh... Oh, there's some there's some there's some Red Sox news to talk about today. I know I wasn't expecting having the Patrick James Light make an appearance uh, on the show today, but he's here. Uh, I, I kind of do want to talk about the opening day starter thing because I remember it, it used to mean something. It used to be a big deal, and it still is. Like if if you're the guy that's getting the ball, it's a big deal. It's a big deal if you're if you're actually the guy that's getting the ball. But after the first week, who fucking cares? Who cares? It really is just kind of this crown. It's a status thing. It's a crowning moment. If you've never been the opening day starter before, you get the ball on opening day, and that's a big deal. Chris Sale's gotten the ball on opening day before. He doesn't need that rub. He doesn't need that nod. Ever since spring training started, Corey Kluber was the guy that was always in line to take the ball on opening day. And Cora said what? That he he made the decision like a month and a half ago? He went even farther today. He said he made it in January and called <laughs> Kluber then to tell him, be like, hey, get the family ready. Get everybody ready. Just you're going to be the guy March 30th against the Orioles. Yeah. So, I mean, like, yes, it's it's nice. To to have the nod to say, oh yeah, but like how many like like when when the, the Detroit Tigers had Scherzer and Verlander and Price and all that. I'm pretty sure David Price, the because he he got traded over there. Yep. So I think opening day 2014 was when he 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 had an opening day start for the Tigers. I'm pretty sure, but it's like. It, are you really that butt hurt that you're not starting the first game after the first week? No one remembers the order. You're just kind of looking at, all right, this weekend we're playing the Yankees. Who do we got? One, two, three. What, what random order did it fucking fall in? Or if it's that big of a series, then you're kind of like moving things around so that you can have certain guys start uh, like a Friday night game against the other team's ace. You want Garrett Cole versus Chris Sale. So you kind of maneuver it a certain way. But to the point that I saw the internet was freaking out about this. I saw the uh, the talking baseball guys tweeted out Corey Kluber was starting on opening day. All the replies, Red Sox down horrendous. Oh, what happened to Chris Sale? What happened to Chris Sale's comeback season? Like, we knew that, like, it's, it's, wild, it's wildly overblown. It's wildly overblown. After the first week, Nobody fucking cares what the order is as long as once you come up against the big boppers that you have your best starters going. And that's really it. On top of it, first off, you're playing the Orioles and the Pirates. Let's not act like we're going up against world beaters here. 
But what annoys me the most about this is the crowd that's laughing at the Red Sox. You know, the people Red Sox are down bad, horrendous. Radio ran with this this week. Uh, you can read my article on 98.5.com. Name names. Um, yeah, read that. Uh, just, you know, me, Hardy, and Zoe were fighting over it all week, kind of going back and forth where they're like, oh, this is Chris Sale. This is the guy who is supposed to be the most competitive guy in the world, supposed to be your ace this season. It's like all these people, including the listeners who wanted to clown on it or whatever, you guys are the people saying Chris Sale will never be a big league starter again. He's going to have to retire at the end of the year. He's broken all these different things. So when the Red Sox go and they say, we're going to handle him with the ultimate kid gloves. His birthday is opening day, March 30th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris Sale, one of the most emotional pitchers I think we've seen. You only have to go back to 2021 when he had diminished stu- or diminished stuff all the way down the stretch. Somehow back against the wall in game five of the ALCS pulls out 98 out of his back pocket because he felt like he needed it to get by. Cora, you know why he made this decision back in January? Why him and Haim made that decision? Because they want to make sure they're being as careful as they possibly can here. You know, you're not going to have a guy who you're just trying to ease in. You're not asking him to be the ace. The conversation all spring has been, we're not asking any of that from him. No expectations. Just try to start every fifth day. We remember the last time their expectations. It was coming into 2022. What happened? He was throwing so hard. He was trying to get all his arm strength back from before Tommy John that he got a stress fracture in his rib cage. That's how far he was pushing himself. The goal is to ease him in. Opening day. Well, first off, he's lined up, but the way it's going to work, they play March 30th. There's an off day after that. So now Sale gets an extra day of rest going into the start of the season. You don't have all the opening day hoopla. It's not his birthday. We know his family's going to be there. They've been there watching his live BPs behind the scenes. That's how emotional this has been. Wouldn't you like to eliminate as many of those variables as you can? And then nothing you can say, no matter what happens going forward, it's not on the Red Sox. They were as careful as possible because it's not about one game. They need 25 starts at the very least out of him, or we know how this season's going to go. It's going to go bad. 25 is your number? I would be thrilled with 25 starts out of Chris Sale. I'm saying that's high. Sure. Yeah, that, I think that's like best case. I, I think that's if everything goes right, because we know Sale's going to get skipped at certain parts. They're not even going to fully let him off the leash until May-ish. That's what Cora said. He's like, we want to be very careful with these guys. This is them being careful. Don't sit there and mock the fuck out of this guy. Make a joke out of him like you have for the last 12 months and then be mad when the Red Sox are careful and don't want to take any risk. Pick a struggle. You can't have it both ways. I'll give the Red Sox credit here. They're playing it safe. If you get those starts out of Chris Sale, not a single person will bitch or question anything. If he went out on opening day, got hurt because he was pumping 98 out there because he was feeling it and all the adrenaline was pumping through him, people would be laughing at him and the Red Sox immediately. Peter, do you give a shit if Chris Sale starts on opening day or not? You're muted. Pull the milk in. You're muted. I believe in you, Pete. Say the pout thing. What is going on with this fucking podcast today? Pete's never don't like pout, a, figure it out. Yeah, don't Pete's, pout, figure it out. He's absolutely not a uh, technical difficulty guy. Jake, how do you feel about Chris Sale uh, not getting the ball on opening day? Well, first of all, I think Tyler just came in and out so many times at the beginning that it just fucked everybody else up. Uh, <laughs> I not agree. fair. That's probably fair. Um, yeah. But I mean, I would have liked to see Chris Sale opening day. Like, obviously, it would have been a cool moment. But I mean, as it's a long season, I don't think we're really going to care after the first week or two that he didn't start. That's kind of where I'm at. Is would it have been cool? Absolutely. Like, I, I just going back to that first Chris Sale outing of spring training, where he makes it through two scoreless, and he comes off the mound, and he's smiling, and he hit 96 in the gun, and he got a punch out on the fastball, he got a punch out on the slider, and he probably felt really good about that. Like the fact that. He had uh, his his family come to like his like side sessions. This means a lot to him. And I said this from the very beginning when, you know, the the bicycle incident happened. And I was like, this guy is a psychopath. All he wants to do is go out there and compete. So the fact that he keeps getting hurt when he's trying to go out there and compete, I can't even imagine what that's doing to his mental state. It's it's almost unfathomable that. A, a man who has that much talent and that high of a compete level 
can't go out and demonstrate that talent and can't go out there and compete and you're just stuck there alone with your thoughts. Like, what do you think Chris Sale's hobbies are? He just, at, at Winter Weekend, uh, I think he got asked, like, who is your favorite strikeout? And he's like, I fucking loved all my strikeouts. He's like, I love playing wiffle ball in the backyard and striking out my son. Like, I get excited for that. <clears throat> That's the type of dude that you're talking about. Just an absolute lunatic. So would it have been cool for Chris Sale to get the ball on opening day? Yeah. Would have been a great part of the story. But the greater part of the story will be if he has a season's worth of success, not just, oh, yeah, he got the ball on opening day and he went out there and pitched eight shutout innings with 11 strikeouts. That'd be cool. Sure. But I want to look up at the end of the year and be like, yeah, to everyone that said he was done, that he was washed, that he couldn't bring anything to the table, that the Red Sox don't have an ace. Chris Sale is still Chris Sale. It's just a matter of if he can stay healthy. There's never been a question about, can this guy perform? Or is he too old? Or is he broken? Not broken down. But is he, has, has his uh, stuff diminished? None of that's ever been brought into question. The only thing that has ever been questioned with Chris Sale has been his health. That's it. You don't have to question his motivation. Guys get paid and they obviously just give up. Pablo Sandoval. Chris Sale got paid and he, he fucking got hurt a lot. It was not like, oh man, he wasn't taking care of his body so that he broke down. No. His elbow was always a ticking time bomb. It just happened to be the worst timing possible because right after you paid him a shit ton of money. But you did get a championship before that happened. Thank God. Uh, but I'm looking big picture with Sale. I would have liked the first chapter to have included the opening day start. But in the grand scheme of things, doesn't matter. And I know a lot of people still are sleeping on the Boston Red Sox as being a team that can make the playoffs this year. You, you'll get looked at like you're an absolute looney, t- looney tune if you say that you, uh, you think that they're going to make the playoffs this year. Like I, I, My first legal bet in the state of Massachusetts on the DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, I think I got them at plus 350. Boston Red Sox to make the postseason. I think it's already up to plus 300. Um, But I got plus 350. Red Sox to make the playoffs. And um, people are like, you should have just donated the money. Like You should have just given it to me. You're just lighting it on fire. I don't feel that way. I genuinely don't feel that way. Like, am I saying it's a guarantee that they'll make the playoffs? No. Like, Pete, would you would you put 100 bucks on the Red Sox to make the postseason? Yeah, because I'm rich. Mm. Let's just say you were poor. Let's just mm-hmm. say, let's say you made 50 grand a year. Mm-hmm. Tyler's laughing. <laughs> I'm like, that's <laughs> more than I actually make. Continue. <laughs> let's say you were poor and made 50 grand a year. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm talking like, this is like my starting salary. No, oh, no, it's cool. Continue. Actually, mm-hmm. you know what? You know what? Let's say you make 40 grand a year. Cause that's what I made. When I, my first job out of college, my first job out of college, I made 27 grand. Jesus. Yeah. That was tough. With my business degree, my first job out of college, (laughs) I made 40 grand a year. Let's say you make 40 grand a year. Are you putting a hundred dollars on the Boston Red Sox to make the postseason? Or are you saying this is my money that I need to eat (laughs) next week? I probably wouldn't go up to a hundred. I would say like 50. I think I think a hundred. Like that you shows almost a have lot to, of faith if you're if you're making forty grand a year. But also, it's like it's almost like an a future investment. Like I feel like you can spend more on a bet that's a future versus like I wouldn't put a hundred bucks on a game that's being played tonight. That makes sense. You're stretching it out. Yeah. So it's like it, over time, we're talking all the way it's, in October. Mm-hmm. That's like what. Eight bucks a month. Yeah, it's like one of the to get yeah, to fifty. It, mm-hmm. That's a good way to trick yourself into it. It's also like to a point where if you lose that bet, you haven't thought about that money for a long time. Yeah. So it's it's like you didn't even lose it. You yeah. haven't had it for the past like six seven months. So it's no no real loss. And then if you win, it's essentially like free surprise money. money. Yeah, it's free money. <laughs> yeah, surprise money at the end of the year. And if you don't hit, then it's like. Oh, yeah, no, I definitely I, there, I remember that night like seven months ago when I spent $100 at the bar. 
This is these are great tips on how to gamble responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. If you make the bet far enough away, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's it's like you didn't even lose, even if you lost it. Right. I like I like I like betting futures. I like how some it's it's mostly it's almost it's not like an irresponsible gambling thing. It's almost like a depression thing where it's like I just need something to look forward to. <laughs> I just need something to look forward to. Unless unless like you just the need Red something Sox to are, live for. Yeah. Unless unless the Red Sox are like 30 games out of a playoff spot with like fucking 50 games to go. And it's like, all right, now I just I'm I'm counting down the days until I lose that hundred dollars. It's true. Uh, futures bets are really solid if you are poor and or <laughs> suicidal. Yeah. Because it gives you something to live for and is also a future investment. Right? Be smart. Bet on the Red Sox to make the postseason. Jake, do you have the DraftKings Sportsbook? Of course I got it. Uh, do you know what the odds are right now for the Red Sox to make the postseason? I think it's plus 300. Plus 300. Hmm. Hmm. Tyler, are you, are you, uh, are you going to be placing some bets? A hundred percent. I actually have never been much of a gambler, but when well, everything because legal, legally you couldn't be exactly. So now I went, I downloaded the DraftKings app and mm-hmm. I'm diving into it all and making some of these easy bets to fill up uh, my bank a little bit, but slowly but surely I'm getting there. Look at you. I, uh, I also downloaded the DraftKings Sportsbook app last week, mm-hmm. but um, to my surprise, my account was suspended. Tried Why? to log in and it was like, you are not allowed to use this app. Uh, I don't know why it just I, I think that maybe it was due to inactivity. Like I, I may have placed a bet like in a different state at some point. And then like because of inactivity, I think it like suspended my account. But I'm back up and running, baby. I was going to say nice. Uh, great, great communication with the folks at DK. They got me be- my me back back in the mix. I'm ready to go. Woo. I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm excited to have some juice behind the games this year. Um, I'm excited that Kevin Puecki will be in town for my birthday. Pittsburgh Pirates coming in. Going to make him uh, take me out to a nice steak dinner. Also, uh, we talked about the significance, the importance of having a, a solid April, a solid start to the season. You can't ask for a better, better couple of series to get off on the right foot. And it's very important. It's very important that the Red Sox have a very solid April. I, like, think I, don't, means- I don't need like a 800 winning percentage or anything like that. But I need to come out of April being like, you know what? This team's not so bad. This team, this team looks pretty good. Like, that's what I need. Jake, do you Ooh. think we're going to get that at the end of April? Yeah, I mean, looking at the schedule, I feel like if we're going to start good this is pretty good for it yeah just yeah. look at last season though like that was the biggest thing they dug them such a, themselves such a hole it didn't matter how hot they got in may and june they do that at the all end time. Of the, and that was just what it was if you can just be a couple games above 500 hey you play 500 ball in may and june or whatever you're still going to be right in the middle of it you, you do that you get to the trade deadline anything happens you'll be getting the best version of chris sale after april when they start to let those guys loose. Look at the injuries even now. Paxson is going to get the hamstring checked out on Friday. He's probably the farthest away. We'll talk about Whitlock, but I like what I saw today. Brian Bayo, two innings of live BP. Now his next step is games. I know Chris uh, Katia was freaking out over the injuries. Goes to show, as we told you last week, not as a big or not something to cry over or panic over. Well, he's a fucking idiot. Objectively wow. speaking. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't regret saying that. I'll say it again. Chris Cotillo is a fucking idiot. Jake, book Chris Cotillo, please. I thought you guys had a pretty like little sweet convo on Twitter. We have a great, we have a great relationship right now. We have a great relationship. People on the Section Ten Reddit were freaking out about <laughs> my relationship with Chris Cotillo, and they're like, "Man, like that that got really awkward when when Jared was mad at Chris Cotillo." That's that never happened. <clears throat> Chris and I have a great relationship. I would love to have him at my home once the podcast studio is done, which is very soon, by the way. Very soon. 
I'm excited about that. You excited, Pete? I'm very excited. I'm very excited about the studio and the gym. Yeah, the gym's outstanding. Very excited. I already, uh, I already had to return one of the machines. Because you broke it because you're so strong? Close. Because I already maxed it out on the first day. <laughs> it was the tricep pushdown. Actually, <clears throat> Gordy Gronk. <laughs> Gordy Gronk is the one that's uh, doing the gym for me. And uh, this is the video that I had to send to him. Wait, where is it? Hey, Gordy. What are you selling me a tricep dip machine for kids? That's the whole step. <laughs> This is day one. I haven't even lifted since November. What do you think I'm going to be doing in August? We need more weights over here, dude. Come on. So, <clears throat> so we got a we got a new tricep machine coming in. Love that. Yeah. Tell her you ready or what? Oh yeah, I, I love to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Did you picture Tyler just being fucking jacked and just ripped? I'd, dude, I'd be unstoppable. If I get jacked and ripped, it's over. It's over for everybody. Do you want to take steroids? Uh, sure. Inject me with whatever you want. Okay. I just care about the finish line. That's it. I don't know how to get them, but I, I can mm -hmm. ask around and see if mm -hmm. anyone knows anyone. Sample them. If people want to send stuff, I'll try that. Like, just get me to where I need to go, please. Tyler's just accepting male steroids. Sure. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm not USPS picky. steroids. He's just going online, steroids.com, and <laughs> ordering them from like a, a, a Russian website. He's doing like steroid roulette. Yeah. I You'll actually just there. typed in steroids.com. It's a real website. <laughs> Is it? Do they sell steroids? Well, I just got 15% off my first order. A little concerning <laughs> it popped up that quickly, but... Oh, yeah. they will take any form of payment. I bet <laughs> yeah. they will. I sure bet they will. will. Yeah. You're Keep you guys posted. Get some gift cards. What are the prices on steroids.com? <laughs> Hold on. Products. Let me see here. <laughs> I can get PGH 1000 for $179. They're giving me a deal, though. It's retail 210 So I'm saving 40 bucks off rip here. Okay. Um. I don't know what this one does. It says overall health. I probably need that. Mm. Uh, brain function, sure. Muscle growth and recovery. It's we should do. One. We should. We should do like a steroid little steroid reviews with Tyler. <laughs> we should. Do, we should do. Yeah, steroid reviews and also <laughs> like Jared takes the physical steroids. Tyler takes the mental steroids, mm. and like Jake takes the recovery steroids, mm -hmm. and we just see how it affects all of us. Yeah. We can just run a steroid review company. We can just pivot. We don't even need to talk about baseball. The, the one that's really catching my eye is test-600x. I, I don't know what that could possibly mean, but it sounds dangerous. And it only focuses on muscle growth. Oh, well, I, I'm an individual <laughs> high T. Um, but muscle growth, strength, and size. That's what I'm looking for. And they're, almost every product is on sale, fortunately enough. So... Uh, Fortunately enough, <laughs> lots of possibilities for me. Wow, I'm uh, I'm excited for you. Let's let's uh, let's get Tyler some steroids, and and while we're at it, let's get him some Comcast Xfinity as well. Because right now, there is so much basketball to watch right now, Pete. It's crazy, and like a ball with a funky spin, it can be hard to get a handle on it all. And now you can stay on top of all the madness with Xfinity 10G Network. With Xfinity 10G, you can power an entire house full of devices with ultra-low lag. So you and everyone you know can stream every single game at the same time and never miss a shot. And if you're on the go, Xfinity will still be here uh, with the assist with millions of Wi-Fi hotspots. Hallelujah. Introducing the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash 10G. Speaking of which, um, Steve asked me to be in his bracket pool. Same. I ignored his text. Oops, sorry, I did Steve. too. All right, let's call. Same. Him. Sorry, Steve. Let's call Steve. Hey, it's Steve. I can't get oh. this phone right now, wow. so please leave a message. Katio, do you? Right, please leave a message. I mean, it went straight to voice. You ignore Steve. Steve ignores you. Now I don't feel so bad. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know what happened there because 
that's never happened before. That's like a his phone is off or he has like no service. You want to try again? Yeah, let's try again. I mean, what could he possibly be doing that he his phone would be off? Hey, it's Steve. Hey, it's Steve. <laughs> Maybe it's an airplane mode. Where could he be going? I don't know. On an airplane. <laughs> There's a 60% chance we hear from him again. True. 40% chance we do not. Mm -hmm. That's how math works. Definitely. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right up there. Let's be honest. There's not a lot to talk about <laughs> with the Red Sox. Like, I'm just been, I've been just been balls deep in World Baseball Classic. Like, you got Kike having, he had the walk off the other day in, in, in he get like mercy ruled game. Uh, Verdugo's had some big hits. Uh, Yu Chang. Yu Chang, the fucking MVP for what, Pool A? Yep. <clears throat> I mean, I tweeted it the other day. You can't go from watching spring training games to World Baseball Classic games back to watching spring training games. Like I, when, when I was down in Fort Myers and we were seeing the pitch clock for the first time, right? That was something different. That was something new. That was... Um, it was something to talk about. It was something to adjust to as a fan. We got the gist of it. Now we're seeing World Baseball Classic action where I compared spring training baseball to NyQuil and World Baseball Classic to fucking biker meth. Like, how do you go from biker meth to NyQuil and expect the same results? You can't. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, that's it. The fucking Chris Sale storyline is it. And it's not even that big of it. It's a non-story. As, as a person who has a Red Sox podcast where we talk about Red Sox related topics, that is such a non-story that if there were four other Red Sox related news items to talk about, that's what we would be talking about. And the Chris Sale story wouldn't have even made the cut. But that's literally the only fucking thing. You had Garrett Whitlock come back. That hey, where was, where was he, Tyler? Where was he, Tyler? Oh, fuck off, Where Jared. was fuck he, Tyler? Off. No, shut the... You're not using the positivity it? horn for that. That's he disrespectful. Came out of the no, 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 no. He no, came no. out of no. the bull fucking pen, Tyler. Tell you, you want right a cookie? Now, kid. You want a cookie? Tell what does that mean? Right now. Well, is he starting the year oh, in the bullpen, people Jared? People are going nuts. Is he people starting the year in the bullpen? People are going nuts for him. J Jared, Woo! answer me. Is he starting the Garrett year in the bullpen? Garrett Whitlock coming out of the bullpen. People are excited for this. A lot of people saw it happen. A lot of people were like, oh, but but Mr. Milligan said that he was going to be a starter. He's such a good starting <laughs> pitcher. And then you know what happened, Tyler? What? You know what happened? Tell me. He came out of the bullpen. He's he one of the best innings. back end of the bullpen relievers in Major League Baseball. Garrett Whitlock coming out to throw multiple innings. He's got the wipeout slider. He's got the 98 mile an hour down, heater. Pete. A two pitch pitcher coming out of the bullpen. Not in the rotation. By the way, it, let's just say let's just say hypothetically, right? This is a hypothetical scenario because. I think the goal obviously is still to have Garrett Whitlock come out of the <clears throat> out of the rotation. Clearly, um, let's just say the Red Sox to take it easy with Whitlock, take it easy with them, take him out of that equation. What's your what's your rotation look like? Because because as much of a Tanner Houck guy as I am, he has not looked very good this spring. He's been all over the fucking place. No, it's more of the same with Tanner Houck. It's like, you, it looks great. It can look great for an inning or two. Then he kind of loses it. He finds it again. But the command is what the command is. Um, I think the issue here is even if you want to talk, maybe Whitlock finding a way into the bullpen or whatever, he's the healthiest out of the three injured starters right now. Injured, quote unquote, guys who won't start the year on time. Brian Bayo is just now getting to game action. Paxson's even further behind him. They're hoping if everything goes well on Friday, he can start working off a mound again. So Whitlock is going to have to slide into that rotation, most likely, uh, just because you're going to be cutting, you know, Cutter Crawford isn't going to probably stay in that rotation the entire time. They're going to have to make a move there, even if they keep Houck. So 
I think we're going to see Whitlock. Now, if you do it in your head, he went two innings today. He'll go three innings the 20th. Hopefully four innings the 25th. Call it five innings on the 30th, which is supposed to be the start of the season. I'm not, they haven't said anything about Garrett Whitlock being ready, but if you kind of do the math, I think there's a really good chance. Uh, he might, maybe one turn, maybe one turn. But the fact that's where you are, you have to be happy. And I'll say the other thing, his two innings of work today, biggest thing for all those people who want to say, oh, Garrett Whitlock's not a starter. Oh, we need him in the bullpen. Hey, 25 pitches in two innings. What did Garrett Whitlock not show me when he was starting, especially towards the end and he was unhealthy? It was penis. being efficient. Is it being efficient. Yeah, you were close. It's okay. <clears throat> it happens to me. Um, that efficiency with Garrett Whitlock, that meant a lot. He finally feels like himself again. Just let him build up. That's it. Okay. This is the time. It is a bridge year. Mm-hmm. If he can't start, guess what, Jared? We send him back to the bullpen. That's one of your best points that you've made in the history of this podcast. Is Thank that you. I've made a this, lot of them. No. This year is a big see what you got year. That's I'm the all biggest thing this year. I'm all in on that under the pretense that next year is a go for it year. Uh, We'll see. I I would hope so. I would hope so, but I could picture in a world where they're like, all right, we're going to get Marcelo Meyer, hopefully middle of the year next year or something like that. They treat it in somewhat of a similar light, maybe a little more aggressive, but it'll be ramping up. I, I hope they push farther, but could I see it being a couple years? I, I don't. It could be two years. It could be one year. I think it's the progress of what we see with Cassis, with Bayo and all these other guys this year. Don't you that, think that's really the main? Don't you think it's fucking crazy that. Essentially, this rebuild started in 2020 and we could be talking about 2025 before they act like let's not act like they were built or trying to go to the World Series in 2021 because they weren't. But well, that's where the whole Bogarts thing comes into play. Like their whole timeline changed again. If it broke the right way. They're over the luxury tax this year. Xander's here. Nate's here who, you know, Nate's had his issues staying healthy so far this spring. Looks like he might be ready for the start of the season, but that's a whole nother conversation. That's where they'd be. It did not break that way. So they pivoted. And now it's about the minor league guys. Those guys who are coming up. But let's be real. What's a year from now? Is Sedan Raffaella in the outfield? Like, he's, he's probably one of your starting outfielders. He got assigned to AAA now. We'll see him at some point this year, most likely. Mm-hmm. Boom. Out of the trio, Mata, Walter, Murphy. You know, Murphy's probably the guy I put on the lowest. Do one of those guys emerge as a starter? You're going to have legit holes to fill. I wouldn't be shocked if next year they're like, yeah, we don't love the free agent class. Um, you know, I don't see them bidding on Shohei Otani or whatever. Do they continue to build forward? Like, is it another step a little more aggressive? But I don't know. I, I think it's all about what plays out over the next six months. I don't think they're going to go after Shohei Otani, but I'm definitely going to fucking toot that horn. Please. <laughs> like, that is going to be something that I am obnoxious about. Obnoxious. Well, Jer- Jared, you saw it when you were mentioning all the highlights. Was not one of the highlights Masataka and Yoshida? Or Masataki Yoshida and Shohei Otani having a little bit of a bromance. They borderline kissed. And I, I, that's what it felt like. Imagine. No, I, I don't even want to have the conversation. But in case it did happen, in case it happened, Shohei Otani becoming a free agent at the end of the year. And if the Red Sox get under the luxury tax, which they did, and John Henry's talking about, I've got not $1 billion, not two, but I got $3 billion, and it's burning a hole in my 75-year-old pocket. I want to give it to Shohei Otani. That could be something that, you know, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's not something that, that is unfathomable to take place in, in, in a market like Boston. Um, especially, what if, what if Masataki Yoshida is like, better than what we had hoped. I already think he's going to be good. What if he's great? And then what if Shohei's like, I don't know. I feel like I see a nice little fit over there. Scary thing is you have the Dodgers who are like, all right, we're, we're willing to take an L this year to try and get under to make it happen. And then the Mets are just seething, waiting 
for the opportunity, but to feel positive about Boston, New Balance, like calls Boston home. Otani's a New Balance guy. I know he wants to be on the West Coast, but maybe if you're looking for some copium, you're looking for something like that. I'm not getting my hopes up. No, but it's fun to think about. But I'm not going to give it a 0% chance. <clears throat> not going to give it zero. Actually, like this offseason, I don't want any inside information. I don't want anyone. I don't want a single fucking person in the know texting me being like, Red Sox had a meeting with Shohei's people last night. I heard it went really well. Don't tell me that. I want to be unplugged on the side of the fence of just any other fan that's waiting, uh, refreshing their Twitter for updates. That's where I want to be. Don't tell me that shit. Like the, the, the Xander thing and, and still it's, it's fuck you to everyone that still gives me shit for that because like I was hearing that. And in the video that I made, I posted the screenshots of the text messages that I got. I posted the screenshots of the text messages that I got with the fucking Xander stuff. So I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be told that anything like that. Just tell me, tell me when it's done. Tell me if and when it's done, when he goes Bro, somewhere else, whatever. That's what I want. Anyone who bitches the beat with multiple people on the beat were tweeting essentially the same thing. They were hearing it. Everyone thought it was going that direction. The Red Sox thought it was going in that direction. Let's grow up. Somebody just fart? No, oh, my dog's just like choking. Oh. I have no CPR. He's good. Oh. He just does that shit fucking randomly. He'll just be walking around. Just be, <laughs> 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 and I'll just look and I'll be like, are you going to throw up? Do you need to go out? And he'll just look at me and be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> no, nah, you're, so, tripping. you're tripping. Just sitting down. Sean. <laughs> Uh, Pete, we need to talk about something. Do we? Mm-hmm. Okay. We never shot you. I know. Yeah, that's got to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, before opening day. It's wrong if it doesn't. It feels weird. Like, if we got two weeks season. to figure it out. Yeah, we got to figure We got to close the book like, on 2022. Don't. And yeah, right. Like, it's the good. it's a good. I mean, like. I don't know if it would work logistically, but having that be like part of the watch party or um, the uh, whatever before opening day would be very funny. How are we going to do that in public? No, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> mm. Could I find mean, an alley. My, my backyard is a lot of woods. But if we miss, it might hit someone's house. And I, I have, I just for the first time today met one of my neighbors. Why don't you just like hang like a tarp or something behind it? I think that happened when, uh, like Brett was shooting YP and one of the, the paintballs went through the tarp and like almost hit Smitty in the face because he was sitting (laughs) behind it. Well, nobody should be sitting behind the tarp. I agree. Smitty was furious. That was like one of the great all-time Barstool radio clips. He like came into the radio room and he was like, it's fucking World War Three out there. I'm just sitting at my desk trying to write a blog and I got bullets whizzing past my head. He's like, you going to do something about this? I mean, he, like that was, that could have been a potential lawsuit. Imagine sitting at your desk writing a fucking blog at a media company. You get shot in the fucking eye with a paintball. Oh, yeah. I'd be you, laying on the ground. That would be the best thing that ever happened to me though. Because I would never work again in my life. Give yeah. me the check. Well, like they were broke as fuck then. Not anymore. Not anymore. He could have sued him and been like, give me like 25% equity. <laughs> That's it's worth true. nothing right now. But boy, two weeks ago, he would have had the best day of his life. Shout out to Kevin. Yeah. Did you see that number? No, I didn't see the oh. number. What was the number? Homie's, homie's swimming in it now. What, what was the number? Uh, I think I saw like 19.5. Damn. Hell yeah. Yeah. That is a, that's a nice little number. That's my guy. Mm hmm. What a number. God damn. Mm hmm. Pumped for him. 
I called him immediately to congratulate him. Um, I don't know what the fuck he's going to do with all that money. But good for him. He earned it. I know. I, I think he said he was going to break off fights a piece. Class act. Class act Clancy. <clears throat> um, what are some things that could happen before opening day at this point? Like, what are we even looking for? It, the big thing, it, it's Bayo, right? Finally see him next week. Yeah. What he looks like on the mound. In Whitlock game action? Building up. Yeah. Next thing is, as long as he comes in tomorrow and says, I feel good, next up is a game. Yeah. But it's going to be two innings. There was another thing that I kind of discussed. I, I can't remember. It was on another show. It wasn't here. But do you think Jaron Duran is regretting playing for Team Mexico now that they, they, he like hasn't been starting and hasn't really been playing? Like He was hitting the shit out of the ball with the Red Sox in spring training. He worked all offseason. He told me he put on 20 pounds of fucking muscle. So he's jacked, probably in the best shape of his life ever, and was starting off red hot in spring training with the Red Sox. Then he goes to um, Team Mexico, and he's been like a pinch runner if they've needed him. It, and that's the thing. Like He knew that was going to be the role. It was never like, oh, Jaron Duran is going to go there and play every day. This is going to be, you know, they need guys. Go figure it out. Um, it's a nice stage to play on. No. And I don't know if he chose to go to Team Mexico, you know, just solely for the respect to his father's side. I know he said that meant a lot. If it was a little bit like, hey, the Red Sox don't have me in their plans. I'm going to go to Team Mexico, someone that wants me around. Um, you know, you brought in Tapia. You did all this stuff. Whatever. Like, they're probably going to move on from me sometime soon. Let me go out there and shine for every team in baseball. But yeah, it, it's going to screw him in a big way because now I look at Rob Mill Tapia. Dude has been the best hitter for the Red Sox this spring. <laughs> He's in 407. He's going to make the opening day roster. He would have to try hard not to at this point. Um, and we'll see, you know, Duran. At the end of the day, he probably needs every day at bats, right? Yes. New stance, all these things. If he's the last guy on the bench, it doesn't do anything for you. It, it doesn't do anything at all. And Tapia has uh, upwards mobility clause as well. So the Red Sox aren't going to want to throw someone outside just to lose talent. <clears throat> throw Duran at AAA, add Tapia. He's performed better or at least been around this spring. And if Duran forces himself up, great. But which I still think could happen. Of course. It's just. Was it worth it? If he had been here the last couple of weeks dominating like he was, can you imagine the conversations we'd be having? Yeah. Especially since it's it's not like you don't have Kike out there in center. You don't have like uh, <clears throat> um, I'm trying to think like it's not Jackie Bradley in his prime. Like You have Adam Duvall who they're hoping can play X amount of games in center field. But shout out to him. He said a couple homers the last couple of days to shut some people up after being what, like over 34 or whatever it was, which again, who gives <laughs> yeah. a fuck? I don't fucking care. I don't care. I don't care about spring training slumps. I don't care. Uh, but it's not like you have an established guy in center field. You don't. You got Duvall for that. It'd be nice if he becomes that. But again, the point that I was making earlier about Braves fans saying he's at his best offensively when he's playing the corners. Not when he's playing center field. So that's an issue. Then you have like the Tapia thing. And it's like, well, he's not an established guy, like an established big league center fielder. So the I'm not saying that the path was clear for Duran, but it wasn't blocked. It wasn't completely blocked. I think Duran and, and Cora singled him out as a guy that could have come into camp. He's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. And I think it was before the Duval signing, though, if I'm correct. But Cora singled out Duran as a guy that, hey, who could show up to camp and really make a difference and help the Red Sox this year? Duran. Okay. So, but then he goes and plays for Team Mexico, but he's not playing for Team Mexico. I would almost ask them, like, hey, can I get the fuck out of here? Can I go back to spring training and, like, get, I don't know. Like, what would he get at this point? Like, 25 plate appearances? It's that. It's, like, mm -hmm. also at the same time, like, we've seen it with Cassis. They were, like, you know, some of the more veteran guys are going to be leaving. It's an opportunity for Cassis, a little leadership. You know, you're one of the last guys standing here. Hey, Jaron, you'd also be one of the guys that spent time in the big leagues. 
Can you get a little more comfortable? Can you establish yourself? Just grow into, you know, being at this level. You have this opportunity to do so. Just the worst thing that could have happened for him was to be away like this and not be doing anything. Just yeah. he leaves your mind again. I don't think that uh, it all depends. Like if Mexico has like a big run or whatever the fuck is going on. I don't think that he'll ever say, yeah, like I regret doing it. I'm sure that he appreciates the experience that he's getting and the opportunity and all that. I'm sure like the to play for Mexico. I'm sure that's very cool. But when you're not an established big leaguer and you have this sort of sketchy path that you could take to being on this roster, uh, nothing's guaranteed, nothing's promised to him, but like there is, I guess, a path, then maybe there is a regret somewhere down the line where he says, yeah, I wish I could have that one back. Because it, it like, how old is he now? 27? 26, right? 26, 27? So, I'm I mean, time's running out to like, it, 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 I'm, I'm sure that if it's not here, he'll get another opportunity somewhere else, whatever. But if you want to play in the, the big leagues with the Boston Red Sox, time's ticking to make that impression, to uh, establish yourself as, as, a, as a guy on this team. It's just momentum. It never felt like he was going to have momentum again. It took a week into spring training and it was like, whoa. I know Ian Kundal talked to someone or at least a scout in the game. He was like, Jaron Duran can still be an everyday player. Like, I still believe that, especially with these new mechanics. And it looks like they were working, but I don't know. It, it, it's wait and see. At the end of the day, if he goes down to AAA and he does his job, we'll be having a different conversation. But it's like the Whitlock thing. This year is about finding out who's going to be here moving forward. Who are your cornerstones? Just, you know, so when you do go and spend in free agency, whether it's this year or the year after that, whatever it may be, you know, we have some cheaper guys. We have that homegrown talent again. If Duran even has a chance at that, the Red Sox will give him a shot. But now you look at it, dude, Rafael is going to be in the same outfield as you. And if the Red Sox are looking and saying, holy shit, we need someone to play center field or right field. I don't think they'd rush Rafael extremely fast, especially earlier in the year. But if you get to June, July, and like he's holding his own, they're going to pick Rafael because he plays an amazing outfield. They'll, they'll lean that way every time because... Duran, who knows if he's going to hit and who knows if he can field. At least with Rafaela, dude may not hit right when he comes up. He's going to be one of the best defensive outfielders in all of baseball. No matter where he would be if he started playing in the big leagues today. <clears throat> um, Pete, who do you think has bigger biceps, you or Jaron Duran, right now? I haven't seen any recent pictures. He's huge. Uh, he's huge. Hmm. I don't know if he's on the uh, if he's on the opening day roster. Maybe we can do a nice little side by side. And I don't think he's going to be. Well, who socks opening day? Then it's I mean, me. look at he's fucking, he's fucking yoked right now. I'm telling you. He's big. Look at his Instagram. They're Are veiny, we? too. I think I got him beat. I don't know, dude. Pete. I think I got him beat. I don't know if you do. I saw him in person, and even I was like, he might be bigger than me, and I'm fucking huge. Jared, uh, you said he was bigger than you, if I recall. Yes. Yeah, but so am I. Mm. That's not a... Mm. It's not up for debate. It's mm. correct. Mm. You saw the picture. You took the picture of me and Morrissey. That was yeah. an outrageous picture. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're a little thick boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pe people accused me of doing the thumb trick on that picture, and that just wasn't the case. Oh, yeah. That's you when look you know fucking things are huge good. in this picture. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. What? I, I typed in Pete Blackburn muscles, and that does. Oh, there it is. It's the fourth picture, actually. <laughs> You Googled <laughs> Pete Blackburn muscles? Well, I, I'm trying to picture it in my head. I'm more of a visual learner. You don't, so you don't have to, to have picture it in your head, Tyler. You can just, you got my number. I'll send uh, you know. anything you need to, yeah, need to see for reference. <laughs> I consider it's like, Pat, I, I don't want to have to pay. You know what I mean? You do not you don't have, have to, pay. to twist his Whoa. arm. 
if you're just like, hey, Pete, picks the scoop shop. The scoop shop comes with a Pete Blackburn OnlyFans subscription for free. You don't right. have to pay. Pete Your Blackburn. LinkedIn picture is pretty good, Pete. Oh yeah, that's the one where I uh, I show up Connor McDavid by flexing my guns right in his face. Wow, I'd be a little embarrassed. Obviously, he's you know as good at hockey as anyone is alive right now. But wow. But man, look at those twig ass arms he's got going there, huh? What a pussy. <laughs> You know what? You know what, Pete? What's up? I might not let you fucking work out here. Just because that might make you look bad? Fuck I mean, the vibes it, up. It's Yeah, I mean, it, this is like the, the Sachem Performance Center. <laughs> and like, I don't know that I don't know that I can have non-Sachems here if it's going to be a competition. Ooh. I mean, you are. It's not a competition. It's not okay. a competition. That's I don't want to make a, you feel insecure. Well, it, it's not about it. him. It's more about someone like me who's new to it and like really trying it's to find It's not a competition. No, it's not a competition. It's not a competition at all. It's you made it the competition right. by asking who was bigger. With you and Durant. Right. But then you but then you were like, he's bigger than me. And I was like, that doesn't mean anything because I'm bigger than you. Also, I again, I haven't worked out since November. This is my first week back. So by August, I'm going to be bigger than both of you. Combined. Not naturally, but. I'll take a test. <clears throat> all right i'll take a test any day i'm not saying i'm above it but let's get let's get duran to the uh to the gym oh we've already discussed like because okay. he, he he said uh he's he's doing he's sticking with his workout plan so okay um that would be a cool thing for like us to do at your place is to do like individual people's workout plans because yeah. I just saw um, a video about Jonathan Majors' upper body Who's workout. Who's that? Jonathan Majors, he plays the guy who goes up against uh, Michael B. Jordan in the new Creed movie. Mm -hmm. He's fucking, he got fucking ginormous so fast. He was also in the new Ant-Man. And so he's just been like putting they don't, on muscle. They don't test for PEDs in Correct, Hollywood. correct. Yeah, like they're, and like you're working out for basically a living for months at a time. Yeah, and you got that's the best all they of the do. Best. They, you got they, the best they, of the best in terms of like chefs, workout plans, supplements, all that shit. So take it with a grain of salt. But like he put, po they posted um his, like the workout that he did, and it's like outrageous. They posted his workout. Yeah, like they posted what he what he's been doing to to get ready for Creed. Like the that the, that always happens when somebody puts on like an actor puts on a ton of muscle or whatever. They're like, here's what this person did to get ready for the role. Where where did you see it? Uh, I saw <laughs> like a um a fitness influencer posted like him trying it, and even the fin fitness insul influencer was like, "This is fucking crazy." Hmm. Do you do you have um do you have like a link to it? Yeah, I'm sure I can find it. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yeah, see if you can find it. Just so that like I I can tell people what not to do because obviously that's crazy yeah here it is yeah uh we got a chat feature in here or what yeah just just you don't have iMessage on your phone i do but then i don't have it on my computer because i have a pc because mm. i'm all right well real, i'll take a, a look a at it game recommend people to just stay away from that <laughs> you don't want you want to get hurt, your dude. entire purpose of workout content is telling people what not to do so they won't be as big as you yeah, <laughs> yeah. just Here's... intentionally bad workouts <laughs> just, i'm the biggest guy in the world <laughs> here's how i work out here's how i got fucking huge i eat three gallons of ice cream a day and i don't move off the couch yeah yeah i do a, i do a lot of cardio that's how you build muscle. <laughs> you just you just sprint for days. Just sprint and you don't eat. A lot just of fasting. Drink sure. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fasting. <laughs> That's how all the biggest guys get huge. We have given out incredible gambling advice and incredible <laughs> fitness advice yeah. on this episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. <clears throat> me and me and Pete's fitness channel is gonna be great. It's going to be us. This is going to be us arguing about whose arms are bigger. For, for like, I don't even know. It's going to be after every single set. It's, we're only going to be doing buys. And after every single set, we're going to be like, okay, let's compare. Let's compare. Yeah, measure them. Measure them. 
<laughs> it would be very funny to immediately finish every set and then just immediately grab the tape measure and wrap it around and see yeah. if there's any growth. Yeah. Just have a scale while you're standing on a scale. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, Can't wait. Tyler and Jake said that they're going to come. Fuck yeah. Dude, I, I know. I even know the lingo, right? So if you work out and then you, you take some pictures, that's called the post-workout pump, right? I think so. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's what they say. <laughs> Fuck you. No, it's I, called it's called progress pics. Okay. That feels old. That feels dated. I, I think amongst the Instagram community, that's where they, they tend to go. I don't take people will understand. Pictures. What do you say? You would think that I would be someone who would do that, but I don't. There's no way. Look at I my do. Instagram. There's it, no is it, pictures of me in the gym there. Well, that's different. That's you posting it. Do you take pictures for yourself to look at? Not really, no. Is that a I hate myself thing or is it more like I'll drive myself crazy if I do that? I think because like uh, I feel like if you were to like take a picture to post or whatever, then you're doing it for the feedback. But all I got to do is put on a fucking T-shirt and show up in content. And that's half the fucking replies are about that more so than like what we're talking about. Like the fucking uh, the I do it, uh, but I don't post anywhere. Just keep it in my phone. Yeah. See, as someone who doesn't have this, I would post it every day, all day, every single day. Like we're there would be the post shape. workout snap. Should I start sending progress pics in the in the scoop shop? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Chat. Please. That was one thing that I did notice when I was in Fort Myers is like how unimpressive a majority of Major League Baseball player physiques are. <laughs> I was like, we are a long way from 1998 where guys were walking around like Hulk Hogan. Like you look around, I'm like, I, that, it almost makes it more impressive when you look at a Major League Baseball player's physique and you're like, how is this guy hitting a fucking 98 mile an hour fastball 450 feet with that body? How? <clears throat> That's one of my favorite things about Rafi. Like, not that Rafi's in bad shape, but he's not Aaron not Judge, right? Like, shape. Uh, he's he's Rafi, right? He's much better shape than it was a couple years ago. Um, yeah. But that's what I love. He'll go out there and he'll hit a baseball harder than just about anyone in the sport and dominate. And, you know, I can compare, or not relate, but similar body types. Actually, I was asking Rafi how his off season was. And do you know that he has like a farm? Yeah, with chickens. Chickens, cows, all kinds of animal, horses. <laughs> he's just like, He's like, yeah, just, you know, I was at my farm with my chickens and he's just, uh, like farmer Rafi is, is I need to see that content. It's a I need to go. I would go to the Dominican Republic just to do a feature documentary on Rafael Devers, the farmer. You could bring the birthday I'm just this year. I'm just imagining it at like not like a farm. I'm imagining it as like a petting zoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just he has Someone his own personal petting. Yeah, he has he, his own he personal. Just go, oh, him he wakes up every morning, has like a juice box, and walks around <laughs> and just pets all the animals, and is like, "Oh, yes." <laughs> what do you think his favorite animal is out of all the farm animals? Llama. I could see him being a llama guy. What's the one with the colorful uh, tail? Peacock. peacock. Yes, peacock. I think he's more of a llama guy. Mm -hmm. I feel like I I think he could be a sheep guy because he likes the feeling of the wool. But what makes you like what? Why would he like the feeling? Why would that excite him? You've never felt a sheep before? Sure. But like it seemed like Rafi had something specifically like. You yeah, it seems like out. that was specific that you were thinking like he's like a big wool guy or something. Well, I mean, think about like petting a llama or a horse compared to petting a sheep. Like that's like that's like petting a blanket versus petting like a dirty animal. Freshly shaven or, you know, fully grown. I think llamas got some some like a coat to them. They're not like a horse. Yeah. Like a but llama has like we're we can't we can't be sitting here debating that this, the sheep is not the softest most I, no, pet it's friendly animal. No, they're softer. Yeah. Who the fuck the is softer than a sheep? Hold on. 
sheep, if they're clean, there's plenty of sheep where if you pet them, you can feel like like wool can be tough in their wool because they're very tall around. Like, what's the softest animal that you could pet at a petting zoo? Is this like uh, an American petting zoo or is we opening this up to different interpretations? I mean, let's not get crazy and include animals that you just wouldn't see at a petting zoo. I'm going to say petting zoo animals. What is the most? What is the most? I guess. It's not like aesthetically pleasing, but like. Like the softest fur. Yeah. What is the most physically pleasing animal to 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 touch to pet? Jake, what do you think? I mean, sheep has to be up there. They literally make blankets out of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, sheep is... I'm definitely saying sheep is is up there. But, like, if you're saying it's up there, then you must have another animal in the back of your mind that would be more... Well, I just think that you were disca- you're uh, you're discarding llamas as, like, a not soft animal. You compare it to a I'm horse. not discarding they have They have, like... A similar sheep type quality to them. Llama blankets. They make llama blankets. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have one? No, no. But one of my uh, buddies. Oh, one of your buddies has one. Oh, okay. What about owls? No one is touching an owl. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, First what? off, they, no. Look up pictures. It's very nicely like furred owls but owls every farm- will kill you they're like you ever, owl- see, you ever seen an owl without like its feathers or fur or whatever it is no. they're fucking terrifying <laughs> yeah they, they are scary but we're talking you know just petting here right but that's, you can't that's all pet an owl it well if it's a farm owl it's a little bit different jake is there a such thing as a farm owl wait 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 jake before you <laughs> Before you answer this, <laughs> every farm has rats. Some have cats to catch them. Some have owls. Continue. Harry Potter. Yeah, no chance that's real. Yeah, there's no chance. There's I'm, no I'm chance. on Tyler's side here. Like, I think that there are owls in in the mix. What farms. petting zoo have you ever been to that you no, could pet none. an owl? None. Never. <laughs> and you've probably been to a lot, right? Because... I mean, like, I wouldn't say that. I'm like a p- petting zoo expert here. <laughs> but... You've probably been to more than three. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I, I typed it in. I'm seeing Put it a this, if, you, if you fucked a sheep more than three times, you're a sheep fucker. <laughs> you know, it's a sneaky, uh, a sneaky, cool animal to touch. Uh, hmm. Like reptiles. No, gross. No, thank you. Why? You didn't see uh, you hold that big ass snake? No, I have. I have. I don't like snakes. I don't particularly love him, but I still I held the guy. Uh, rays. You yeah. Ever, you ever been to a ray tank? Mm hmm. Those things are very cool. They're like very slippery and soft. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've t- I've 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 dabbled with the, the rays. I was actually when I did that rock, paper, scissors thing during quarantine, I beat Tyler Glasnow. And he was supposed to have to get in the ray tank as that's as definitely a ray that you'd love to touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slippery and wet too. <laughs> a little soft. Are, are they all poisonous or some like, no, no, you know, they remove it or whatever. No, I don't know that for a fact, but like, I feel like you could probably, I mean, they wouldn't have them at a ballpark if they could kill people. <laughs> That'd yeah. Be and they cool also, have, they, they have them at the aquarium too. Like that's where I did like yeah. the ray tank thing and then they also like whenever you go like to like a carib like a fucking tropical island or whatever they have like things that you, you not take say pictures caribbean i said i was gonna say caribbean but, that but i know that still there's a split it. there it's like the um what's the like the the nut that everybody pronounces different pecan or pecan there's plenty of, like potato Yeesh. potato there's plenty of words that if you say stand. potato you're a fucking asshole i say potato no you don't Yes, I do. No, you say tomato, Jared. I go to the 99 and I get chicken fingers with mashed potatoes. (laughs) No, you don't. (laughs) Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Why why is that? I've I've heard you. Nobody says that. Nobody says tomato. (laughs) Like, unless you're talking with an accent, that doesn't count. Do you think you could actually order mashed potatoes, like with a straight face at a restaurant? (laughs) And like while I, she, I mean, I might be able you, to order it with a straight face. I don't know if it would be received with a straight face because 
if if I heard anybody order mosh potatoes, <laughs> I'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. What's what are the other ones? Pecan, pecan, niche. Yeah. No, it, it, isn't there? No. There's two ways to say it. No, there's not. Niche. Yeah, isn't niche. there like? Thank you. A niche category, niche category. It's niche. I say niche. Yeah, me too. Well, how do you say uh, the state where Portland is? Um, Maine. Or no, not that one. The other one. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it, Tyler. <laughs> I was so ready. Did you? I was like, oh shit, this is my moment. No, it's the be- it's, that's the original Portland and the better Portland. But it's Oregon. I say Oregon. But the, the video game is Actually, Oregon. Actually, I say Oregon. Trail. I say Oregon. Oregon Trail is the game. Oregon is this. That doesn't make any sense. What? I know, but that's the what trail it is. is located in Oregon. I know, but it's it like I've I, I, I've had this discussion before on a podcast because I know that people have either like DM'd me or tweeted me about this, like people that are from Oregon, but it's like Oregon State. Mm-hmm. No one says Oregon State. I do. Well, you're an idiot. It's Oregon, Oregon State, and then Oregon Trail. Doesn't make any sense. Dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, dumbest thing I've ever heard is you saying Maine. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you? Clarify the question. How about that? Did, are you even like? There's no way you've ever played Oregon Trail before. No, I I, I thought that was a legit trail or something. It was. People, it was old video for game. us, kinda. But like, what generation of console are we talking? Like Computer. early PC. Oh, like I, like. I didn't exist until PS2. I did play some, you know, PC games, Pajama Sam. Um, but this I, I wasn't even like a, I wouldn't even say this was like oh a Oh my PC God, game. holy shit. Guess what, what year Oregon Trail came out? Like 1987. 71. God damn. How's Jesus. that possible? Did they even have computers in 1971? The I thought government like, when always did, had like, them. When did like Pong come out? How is the progress like? Okay, we have Pong, which is just one thing sliding up and down a screen to, okay, here's Oregon Trail. Pong came out in 72, came out after Oregon Trail. Are you, are you talking about like, is that like a, a, like a board game no. or like a computer game? Oregon Trail is a text-based strategy video game developed by Don Ra- Ra- Rawich, Rich Rawich, uh, Bill Heineman, and Paul Dillenberger. In 1971, and produced by the Minnesota Educational Computing uh, Con Consortium, <laughs> beginning in 1975. <laughs> Initial release date December 3rd, 1971. Mode: single game, single player video game. That's crazy. I can't believe that it's that old. Also, how is how is like nobody made an Oregon Trail movie, movie or TV show? I think like, they did. They they have, but the last one was 1959. Oregon Trail series. 1977. Huh. And this game was fun. Crazy. Yeah, it's great. And this game you say was fun, old people? (laughs) Yeah. That was like that was like the the like the number one thing that you could hope to do at school in elementary school. Yeah. Was get a chance to play Oregon Trail. If your teacher was sick and you had a substitute teacher, they'd be like, all right, fine, play fucking Oregon Trail. You would like if you had computer class, they would teach you something for the first like 35 minutes and then be like, all right, the lesson's done. And be like, can we play Oregon Trail? Yeah. For 10 minutes, 10 minutes, you can play Oregon Trail and you play, which is stupid because you can't get anything done in 10 minutes on Oregon Trail. No. You can die in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You ju- you're just like sprinting across the state of Oregon, which is not <laughs> good strategy. Got to be. It's very tedious. You have to plan. You have to plan your supplies. You have to plan your crew. Yep. And then you gotta gotta navigate this trip. Mm -hmm. Two biggest threats are fording the river, Mm -hmm. and then avoiding dysentery. Well, people will just get the sniffles and die. Tyler, do you know what dysentery is? Yes, I uh, I learned about it when I was in high school, uh, reading. um, Okay. The book Night. By uh, Eli Wiesel. Okay. It's about, uh, you know, World War II and the okay. concentration camps. 
And his father, unfortunately, passed away from it. It's a tough thing to die from. No, oh, it, it was traumatic. I would always do my homework in the middle of the night, so I was like reading those stories and not a good time. Mm. I feel like I brought the mood down with that, but I wanted to be <laughs> honest and vulnerable. I wanted to be honest <laughs> and vulnerable and vulnerable. Yeah, Oregon Trail was, that was the, that was like the, the OG dessert. It was like a snack. Yeah. You had to earn that. Dunkaroos and Oregon Trail, like the two things that you could do at, at elementary school that would give you the most joy. Mm -hmm. You guys are so old, I can't even like relate to what we played in computer class. I played like Pop Tropica, like Brain Pop. Never you guys even know what any of that is? No. no. I think it was like Math is Fun 101 or something. No. I did get caught one time playing, and it was, it was a really bad day. I actually broke down into tears immediately. Yeah, First grade. Like you, would, you, little bitch. you got caught playing a math game. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was Tyler's <laughs> wild ex escapades. It was the full elementary like... <laughs> school. <laughs> He'd go off and sneak away and do math. <laughs> it's on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't uh, <laughs> alone, but I was victimized as the only one that day. I played the Space Jam computer game. I have no idea what that is. Space Jam? Yeah. It was you awesome. Definitely. Space Jam for the PC was amazing. It was like probably what? Not, when did the movie come out? Like 96? Yes. And then there was a Titanic game that had nothing to do with the movie. That. It had nothing to do with it. I think I believe it was before the movie. And the movie was based on the game. You know yeah. how the game ends. That sucks. Well, it's it was something about like there were like Russian spies and you had to like perform all these like sketchy ass like missions on the Titanic before it sank. But like you're on the ship when it hits the iceberg and you can it was like a free roam game. It was almost like GTA Titanic. Damn, that's wild. Yeah. But it, I all I did was like a like pinball. Oregon Trail and like where backyard in the world baseball? is Carmen San Diego and backyard baseball. Yeah. Mm. You ever do where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Yeah. I don't have very many, many memories of that. It was usually the Titanic Russian mob game and and Space Jam and Backyard Baseball 2001. You get you got to look that game up. I might. I, I don't know how I can get my hands on it. I bet you there's some sort of like website that has like old computer games that you can just play on the internet now. Yeah, just as an emulator. Yeah, for sure. Emulator, yeah. What is that? An emulator. It just like creates like a it's like just allows you to play old PC games huh. or like old video games. I okay. used to do it like go back, play like old like Game Boy games and different yeah. stuff like that and you just load it right up. No? Yeah. Good to know. Old when I wanted to play like Pokemon, I would always, exactly. like, always use mm -hmm. an emulator. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll look into it. Did you, uh, did you ever keep up with The Last of Us? I have seen every episode except for the finale. Okay. What do you think? I thought it was great. My dad hates it, but really? he's, an, he's an idiot. He like, he, he, uh, I, I'm trying to think of like the shows that he's into. He, he likes a lot of the same shows as me. He likes Breaking Bad. He likes Better Call Saul. Uh, he was a big X-Files guy back in the day in like 24. Um, Oh, what other show? He likes Deadwood. Have you seen Deadwood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He likes Deadwood. Um, but yeah, he he didn't like this show. He's like, it's just Why, the, the acting's complaint? not good. What? Like, I don't like the story. I was like, Dad, like everyone is talking about like this is one of the greatest television shows of all time. He's like, Yeah, I just don't see it. He's like, <laughs> he's like, it's slow paced. He's like, get to the point. It's like it's very slow. He, like, watches, he loves Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Those yeah. are like famous slow burns. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He uh, it's too slow for him, but wild. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he's caught up on it, but I, I only have the the season finale to go. But I saw the only like spoiler that I've seen surprisingly for like a show that popular is something about like a birth. That's all I've heard is that expect oh, that's, that's not a big one. OK, cool. That's the only thing I've heard so far. I don't know if this is a spoiler, if you can even say it, Pete, but does it end how the first game ends? It does. Okay. Makes sense. You played the video game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I know I mean, the best like, video games ever. It's wildly popular. What was it on? What console? Like PlayStation 4? PlayStation yeah, PS3 3, to start. Yeah. What? 
Yeah, it's like it's a recent video game. I'd the, never uh, even heard of it. Really? Well, I yeah. mean, it's PlayStation exclusive. So what? I was a PlayStation guy. Yeah. So, I mean, it was it was like one of the biggest PlayStation games ever. Never heard of it. I, I, I remember like, one game in your role, game like stop. Silent Hill. Like all those games that got made into movies, but I never no, heard yeah, of it. It was huge. Second one won game of the year as well. How many Although of them are there? People, there's two. And there's so, two more in development. Two more games in development. Yeah. One of them is a multiplayer game. That's going to be the next one. And then the third one is going to be like part three. Uh, I will say Last of Us multiplayer for the first game, one of the most underrated multiplayers there is out there. And I wasn't an Uncharted guy, so maybe that's why. But I can't tell you how many hours I put on into that game online. After I didn't play it story. all online. You think so. it would suck, but for some reason, PlayStation was really good at like supporting those kind of things. Well, they scrapped the multiplayer for the second game because they think that it's going to be so good that they wanted to give it its own game. So that's encouraging. I wish Jerry, I wish you were more into uh, video games. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to do that after I retire in five years. <laughs> what was the last game you beat, Jared? Like you actually sat down and put time into Star Fox. <laughs> Wow, Star Fox. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You got a long list. Star Fox. Are you like a? Are you like a? What do you? When you get into video games, what do you think that you'll like? Like, like first person campaign shooter. games or like competitive shooters? Uh, I mean, like I, I usually, I usually just get the latest Grand Theft Auto and I just go around like shooting people and then I, I'm like, all right, I got that out of my system. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. A decade. It's been a decade. I know. Since they put out a Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. Yep. September 2013. I bought it for like three or four different platforms. That's how long it's been out. I never did a mission. I've, I don't think I've ever done a That's mission crazy. in my life. Dude, you're missing out. That, that is a great really story. No. Red Dead Redemption. You should play that. I played Red Dead. The second, the second one. Yeah, I played Red Dead. You did you really? Mm -hmm. The newest one? No, the the original. No, yeah. play the second one. Second one rules. Wait, are, are you talking Red Dead like way back even before like uh the Xbox 360 Revolver. time? Yeah, yeah like, like way 2009. back. 2009. Okay. That was, that was no, that was probably Yeah, that was 360. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption. That would be a second cool one or rules show or movie. Yeah, that's what I that's what I want next. Yeah. I want HBO to do Red Dead Redemption. Jake, you play video games? I was a big GameCube guy growing up. Um, <laughs> I have an Xbox Series X. I played Warzone a little bit, but I haven't played in a couple months. I don't know. You guys got to get PCs. It'll change your life. It's too hard, dude. Like, you got to get like a new graphics card and all these things. It feels complex. It, it's just that everyone is too good at video games. For me to just jump it's back changed. into it. It's definitely changed. What do you mean? Changed in the sense like, that like, it's too hard? Yeah, that like people are way sweatier. Like, if you want to just like log on to Call of Duty and like have a nice little relaxing time after you've done your nine to five, good fucking luck because there are fucking 12 year olds out here trying to make a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but even they want to play video games for a, for a living, they fucking grind 20 hours a day and you just get shit on and it's tough. But even then, like, then PC should never be something you consider, Jared. You're still run into it pretty consistently on console, but you have a better chance of playing with like other people who are just trying to blow off steam at night. Yeah. You didn't play um, Fortnite, Jared, when it was like popping? No. Oh, I didn't either. I remember like really? when I was at Barstool yeah. and like <clears throat> Dev Devlin and Smitty. I think it was mostly Devlin, but he was like, you should get into Fortnite because a lot of the MLB players play Fortnite. And then you can make content while you're playing Fortnite with the players. And I was like, that on paper makes a lot of sense. I will, however, not be doing that. Oh, well, because like Pete said, you run into those 12 year olds who could build like so ridiculously fast. It's not even worth you trying to learn the game. And like, what do you think these players are doing when they're on the road? They're playing Fortnite like at night after the games, especially like the pitchers. Like Matt the Barnes. pitchers. Yeah. Like fucking David Price, Joe Kelly. They would bring their consoles on the road with them. Yeah. Like, I can't remember if it was if it was Joe Kelly or like J.D. Martinez. One of them had like a whole ass suitcase for his gaming equipment. Like they would go on the road. You'd have your bag for your fucking baseball shit. You'd have your clothes, your suits, 
And then you'd have a suitcase just for your console. And they would play in the hotels and shit. I'm like, where do you find the time to like prepare for facing major league pitchers or hitters, depending on what position you play, get a workout in, get your mind right, get rested, and then you're going to play video games? And it's all going to sync with what everyone else is doing. I guess if you're, if you're playing with your teammates and you're all on the same schedule, it's like, all right, this is when we sleep. This is when we eat. This is when we shower. This is when we play video games. So I don't know, but it must be cool to have a group of guys that you like that your entire schedules are just in sync with each other. And yeah. they just game. That's what they do. That, that's what made those like Blake Snell live streams so fun because he was playing with his teammates and other guys around the league. They all kind of come together. Blake Snell is awesome. You a fan? I'm a big fan. He, uh, <laughs> anytime that I was posting like depressing Xander Bogart's con- content, he liked every single one of the posts. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. mine? Well, that hurts even more. Yeah. Mm hmm. You guys have any, uh, closing thoughts here? Hmm. Pete, you've been watching any World Baseball Classic? Probably not, right? I watched like a few minutes. I saw um, a couple innings of USA Mexico and then mm. USA Canada, or I think they got their shit pushed in. 11 or, to 5. Yeah. And outside of that, like, it's not like, a, is it elimination yet or what? Uh, no, kind of. Like, there's like, there's all kinds of like weird ass tiebreakers. So yeah, it's going to get down to like, like I'll, I'll start watching when it's like win or go home kind of shit. Mm. Like when it has like a real playoff feel to it. Well, tonight, then I'll say this. Alex Cora is not happy with me tonight. <laughs> Alex Cora is Puerto Rico versus my Dominican Republic. Um, this is going to be a big game. It's about to it's about to start. Uh, Alex made it very clear that he was not happy with me. Carlos Fabless is very happy with me. <laughs> so I will say, I don't understand what the fuck is going on with the jerseys at the at the World Baseball Classic. Great Britain is terrible. terrible. Go home. There's there's Go some home. really good ones. Dominican and Republic. there are some fucking horrible ones. Dominican Republic has the best jerseys. Team yeah, Mexico's those, those are have great. been really good as well. Mexico has been good too. Great Britain's is a joke. A literal joke. Can- Canada's are also bad. Like they, it, it's got like, it's almost a good jersey, but then like the writing across the chest just looks, makes it look like it's fucking like, we're like Bob's, the, the, the clothing store Bob's. They used mm-hmm. to put out like NFL jerseys, but they were like a watered down version of like the actual jersey. So if you wore them to school, people were like, oh, sick jersey from Bob's. Your family's poor. It was like the Marshalls like, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like it was like a knockoff jersey that was like was literally designed to tell people that you were poor. <laughs> That's what like Great Britain has. That's what Canada has. The great. I don't. I'll be honest. There's there are some ugly jerseys where it's like, all right, you tried. <laughs> You're right. With Great Britain. <laughs> Not only are they ugly, you didn't try. Like, I, by calling them ugly and saying that you should throw them in the dumpster, I don't feel like I'm insulting someone that took a lot of time to work on those. No, you could make those in, you could literally make those in Microsoft Word. In, in less than three minutes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I don't think that, like, you know, normally, uh, like, in, in the case of my painting with, with Kike Hernandez, art is art. Is some art better than others? Yes. Comparatively speaking, yes. But art is art. And, and I took a lot. I took two hours to paint that. I can guarantee you that whoever designed the Great Britain <laughs> World Baseball Classic jerseys took less than two hours to, to be like, I got it. This is it. <laughs> I and love like, it. Print it. Rush school product. They have a, they have a great uh, flag, too. Mm-hmm. Like, and they don't incorporate it at all it's crazy and they've got all kinds of like things that they can incorporate into their design like a crown and shit you can do all yeah. kinds of shit fucking incredible crest yeah and they're like let's let's do 
Times New Roman <laughs> bowl. Aerial size <laughs> yeah. 40. And then like they it's weird because like the the way that it splits down the jersey is on one side it says eat tain. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So it's like, what the fuck is going? This is the worst jersey of all time, Eat and it sucks because they had personality. Like the celebrations on base were fire. Like they were into it. I don't know. Jerseys just brought it down a vibe. They're just. I saw someone say they're so bad that they're good. They're not, and no. they're not so bad. It's like so bad. They're good. Are is reserved for jerseys that do crazy shit. And that like people, people initially just think that they're too much and they're like, oh, these are weird and ugly. And then you get like Stockholm syndrome where you're with them long enough that you're like, actually, these are pretty sick and I love these. The, and the, then they, they have nostalgia appeal to them. The uh, I think it was the Seattle Mariners and I forget who they were playing. But when they did like uh, the futuristic night, did you ever see yeah, these? Turn ahead, the turn ahead, the clock. Yes. Yeah. Those are so bad that they're good. Yes. Yeah, right. Like, if you saw somebody wearing one of those, like, now, you'd be like, dude, oh, that is such a sick jersey. <laughs> yeah. I cannot imagine in, like, 15 years seeing somebody wear that great Brit- Britain piece of shit and be like, sick jersey, dude. No. <laughs> They'd be like, did you make that? Is that your fucking, like, Sunday beer league softball team? You guys are great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> You're from Brookline, dude. Also, you know who had the best uh, turn ahead the clock jerseys? Were the uh, Rockies, the Rockies, yeah. just a gigantic uh, mountain logo across the front of the those. Jersey. I believe those are the only two teams that did it. N- uh, the Giants did it, too. Who did they play? They played someone that actually didn't the, turn ahead the clock. The Giants did it. And the uh, the Pirates did it. The Pirates just had the gigantic uh, f- like f- face logo. On when on did their they jersey. do that? Because I believe the original was Seattle. And the Rockies. So the Giants and the Pirates, did they do that after? Maybe. Could have been two separate games or two two different years. Maybe. Guess what though? The uh the fiftieth or the twentieth, thirtieth, one whatever is coming up in twenty twenty seven. They should definitely revisit those. The anniversary of the original? Yeah. That would be awesome. Because I just Googled like the looking at them and 2027 is the uh, 30 year anniversary. I'm going to I'm probably going to look into buying the Mariners one. Did, I mean, Griffey must have played in that game. He did. Mm-hmm. A turn ahead the clock. King Griffey Jr. Seattle Mariners jersey. You kidding me? That's got to. That's probably got to go for so much money. I bet you there's there's someone making. They might be like, making like knockoff ones. Yeah. Turn ahead the clock. If you wanted like a legitimate one, that would probably cost you so much money. Because I feel like in 1997, they didn't even really like sell like a ton of merchandise. Because if you if you go to like if you look at like a Red Sox crowd in 1997, there weren't there weren't like tons of people wearing jerseys and shit. Four hundred dollars. King I'm Griffey seeing. Jr. Seattle Mariner turn to have the clock jersey Mitchell and Ness condition brand new for four hundred. Okay, that's a lot, but it's honestly kind of cheaper than I expected. I just love that they're sleeveless. <laughs> We that should we should we should each get one and then we should do all of our workout videos in the turn ahead the clock jerseys. That I'll is get the genius. Colorado one. You get the the Seattle one. Tim Griffey Jr. Turn ahead of the clock jersey. It's got to be a battle. Yeah. Okay. I'll get a Larry Walker. Bucks. Yeah, I was about to say I saw it for two hundred. This. Apparently the Diamondbacks. Oh, it's one on too? Mitchell and Ness's website. I was gonna be like, oh, where the hell? Oh, they they're sold out of large XL and two X. Good squeeze. That's gonna be a tight squeeze. I, dude, they have they have them for a bunch of teams. I wonder if like 
if all of these were worn. Because I feel like I only saw the Rockies and Mariners, but they have them for like a bunch of teams. Maybe so they have it for the, the Diamondbacks. They have it for the Padres, the White Sox. Oh, I see them. I mean, the, the turn ahead, the clock jersey for the Braves is just a sleeveless Braves jersey. I know. <laughs> oh, the small of the Larry Walker one. I wonder if I'd fit in it. Definitely. And even if I didn't, it would just be super tight. I would look huge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude. They have all the late 90s, like Red Sox BP on here for like 100 bucks a piece. Like, ton of nomar stuff the rockies one only comes in a small uh, i know that's why i was looking Ooh, okay i mean i don't necessarily like i feel like uh, i want they have a tony gwynn one but again it's it's kind of like the padres one where it's like this just looks like a sleeveless padres jersey like i don't think the people would get it and be like oh sick turn ahead the clock jersey it would just look like you bought like a weird piece of uh, Padres merchandise. It would look like I bought a Padres <laughs> and just BP jersey sleeves. and cut the sleeves off, which is something I would do. Yeah, not the worst look, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to a Tony Gwynn jersey. I fucking love Tony Gwynn. I have Tony Gwynn socks. What's thirty? Thirty divided by twelve? Uh, definitely not an even number. Two and a half. So it's two and a half feet in length for the small. I don't know if that's enough. I'll have to do some measurements after I get done doing this podcast. I've, I've never measured my clothing in feet before. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess that was a that was a free free ad for Michelle and Ness. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, opening day, two weeks away. When we get to uh, the regular season, we'll be moving to two episodes a week. We have more detail. We, we don't know, like officially know the, the watch party, all that shit, right? For opening day, we don't know anything about that yet, Jake, like officially. Well, I think we know that it's just a watch party and that it's at 11 a.m. at House of Blues. So we can say that. So it's at 11 a.m. at the House of, <laughs> House of Blues. Yep. What time's uh, opening day? Like two? Two. Yes. Wait, so are we going to be like, we're not going to the game. We're going to watch it at the fucking House of Blues. No, it's I'm like a pre-game. Pre oh, okay. All right. So then we can go to the game. Yep. Sick. House of Blues before opening day, which is on Lansdowne Street. Um, behind the Green Monster, for those who don't know Lansdowne Street, I'm sure you know. But uh, we'll be having a little pregame hangout. Then we're going to go to the game. And then uh, we got something cool lined up after. Potentially. 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 <clears throat> uh, Pete, any final thoughts? No. Very excited for the season to start, though, so that we can have real topics and I don't have to talk about shit that Tyler Oregon cares about. Trail. Which mm. is cool. I think if people will really enjoy that conversation. I think people are going to be like, wow, you really took me down a path of nostalgia that I didn't think I was going down when I opened up a Red Sox podcast today. My favorite part of the podcast. Yeah. What is that? Let, let's set it right now. How many games are you going to go to this year, Pete? Oh, fuck. Um, fuck. Um, I think this, this year, if you don't hit this number, uh, Let's let's for cut it in half. Worse. For let's every do... game that you fall short of, I get to throw an egg at you as hard as I can. Okay. Um, fourteen and a half. No, there's no halves. Yeah, like, there is because you have to do a half because that way you you either go over or under. So let's. Uh, so no, if you want to do, that's not either. how that works. No. So 15. you need to like go to fifteen games, and if you don't make it to fifteen games, 
then for every game under 15, that's how many eggs I get to throw at you. Okay. Let's do 15 then. 15. We'll do half of what I did last year. Okay. So if you... Or what I wanted to do last year. If you go to 12 games, then I throw three three eggs eggs at you. Correct. (laughs) As hard as I fucking can. (laughs) From, from, From 40 feet away. That's a that's a far distance. I'll take that. Yeah, for me, forty feet. Yeah, for me. Yeah, you got a little. You got a little pussy ass arm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you better go. And if you miss, and if you miss, if you miss, then it ca- it still counts. You only get that amount, that number of eggs. No, you get yes. take the enjoyment no, out of it for him. He no, should. Jared should have no worries during this. <laughs> you get, what, no, that's you get that's the way that it works. Eggs. If it, if it takes 18 tries, you're getting no, hit with three eggs. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. All right, fine. Fine. If I go to like 12 games, but you I get, get to warm eggs. up first. Fine. Yeah. You can have like a little target practice. I'll, no, I'll just, I don't need target practice. I'll play catch with like a baseball just to get my shoulder hot. And then I'll just switch. I'll throw like a couple eggs to get like the release point down. And uh, then I'll be ready to go. Cool. Works for me. Yeah. <laughs> I might as well just carry over the paintballs and be like, all right, today's paintball and egg day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tyler, any final thoughts? Uh, yes. More Marcelo Meyer. Shut the fuck up. Not you, Tyler. Sorry, I'm talking to my dog. No, <laughs> I'm used to it. It's okay. Uh, more Marcelo Meyer and more yep. Miguel Blaze in spring training, please. Okay. Jake? I just noticed Tyler's microphone is literally directly in front of his face. <laughs> so I have like been workshopping this. comes down and it's like right in between your eyes. <laughs> it's like the worst place it almost, it possibly It be. almost looks like the, the piece that is attached <laughs> to the microphone is like a mustache. <laughs> I hate you guys. He's got, I like, noticed- he's got like a handlebar mustache <laughs> because of his microphone. Look at him. <laughs> well i this top bar i started looking i was like i should put it right in the middle of my face because then you can see a lot of my face still instead of it all covering it's a work in progress but unlike pete i built my setup so i also did no nope, nope you're getting your desk built I, i'm helping no doesn't sound like it six I days i have progress picks yeah why do you think it took you think if i had a true professional do it it would have taken six days fair no. point it, I'm doing my best here. Well, you can, you can clearly see what Jake's doing with his mic, and you guys have a similar setup, and I can see all of Jake's face. Mm-hmm. You can see my face too. Mm-hmm. Same. Next episode, watch my new setup. You will see my entire face. It will be great, and I will figure out how to get the second monitor working. Okay. Sounds good, dude. Yeah, it does. What a pleasure. Mm. All right. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Buenas noches, amigos.